O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Hymn 528. Lord, you give the great commission. Heal the sick and preach the word. Least the church neglect its mission, and the gospel go unheard. Let us witness to your purpose with renewed integrity. With the Spirit's gifts empower us for the work of ministry. Lord, you call us to your service. In my name, baptize and teach that the word world may trust your promise, life abundant meant for each. Give us all new fav fervor. Draw us closer in community. With the Spirit's gift, empower us for the work of ministry. Lord, you make the common holy. This my body, this my blood. Let your priests for earth's true glory daily lift life heavenward, asking that the world around us share your children's liberty. With the Spirit's gift, empower us for the work of ministry. Lord, you show us love's true measure. Father, what they do, forgive. Yet we hoard as private treasure all that you so freely give. May your care and mercy lead us to a just society. With the, Lord, with the Spirit's gifts, empower us for the work of ministry. Lord, you bless with words assuring. I am with you to the end. Faith and hope and love restoring. May we serve you as you intend. And amid the cares that claim us, hold in mind eternity. With the Spirit's gifts, empower us for the work of ministry. Today's Psalter reading is from Psalm 118. O oh, consider my adversary and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and deliver me. Give me life according to your word. Salvation is far from the ungodly, for they do not regard your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. Many are who trouble me and persecute me, yet I do not swerve from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the transgressors, because they do not keep your law. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. O oh, give me life according to your loving kindness. Your word is true from everlasting. All the judgments of your righteousness endure forevermore. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad of your word as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but your law I do love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Grant, great is the peace they have who love your law and find in it no stumbling block. Lord, I have looked for your saving health and have done your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies, and I have loved them exceedingly. I have kept your commandments and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my complaint come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you have taught me your statutes. Surely my tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand be strong to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your saving health, O Lord, and in your law is my delight. O let my soul live, and it shall praise you, and let your judgments help me. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. O seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, uh, chapter 13. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, 
so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul shares his hope in Christ to the Colossians and to all that call themselves followers of Christ. Hear Paul's prayer. So that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in knowledge of God. Colossians 1.10. A life bearing fruit in every good work is truly living life to the fullest. A little girl asked her mother, Mommy, why do you cut off the ends of the meat before you cook it? The girl's mother went on to tell her that she thought that cutting off the ends of the meat added flavor by allowing the meat to better absorb the spices. That perhaps she had better ask her grandma since she had learned it from her. So the little girl found her grandmother and asked, Grandma, why do you and Mommy cut off the ends of the meat before you cook it? Her grandmother thought for a moment and said, I think it allows the meat to stay tender because it soaks up the juices. But why don't you ask your Nana? Because, after all, I learned from her, and she has always done it that way. The little girl was getting a little frustrated, but climbs up in her great-grandmother's lap and asks, Nana, why do you and Mommy and Grandma cut the ends off the meat before you cook it? Nana answers, I don't know why your mom and grandmother do it, but I did it because my pot wasn't big enough. Brothers and sisters, how many times have we walked through life blindly without knowing the purpose for what we do? One of golf's immortal moments came when a Scotsman demonstrated his new game of golf to President Ulysses S. Grant. Carefully placing the ball on the tee, the Scotsman took a mighty swing. The club hit the turf and scattered dirt all over the president's beard and the surrounding vicinity, while the ball waited placidly on the tee. Again, the Scotsman swung, and again he hit the ground. Our president waited patiently through six swings and then quietly stated, There seems to be a fair amount of exercise in the game, but I failed to see the purpose of the ball. President Grant made a statement that could be true about many lives. There seems to be a fair amount of exercise, but failed to see the purpose. How many people have much activity in their lives, yet little or no progress. For all the busyness in each of our lives, are you getting anywhere? Are you going anywhere? Is there any purpose for it all? Brothers and sisters, purpose gives meaning to our lives. It gives one the ability to say, I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. And the question needs to be asked, are you living or are you just existing? There is a difference. There is a tremendous difference. Living has been defined as vigorous, alive, and full of life. Existing has been defined as to have being, to just being there. How many are just existing and not truly living? So, so many wake up. 
and follow a routine every day. They go about their business, but they have no real sense of purpose in their lives. Their happiness, their fulfillment of life depends largely on others and on circumstances. If they were completely honest, they would admit that inside they are empty. They are not filled to the brim with life. Now, I'm not saying that we all have to live lives of liberty with a new, wild change every day. However, we can learn to live lives that are full of vigor and livelihood rather than being content with just being, of just existing. The inspired Word of God gives us three ways to accomplish this. First and foremost, brothers and sisters, seize the day. Seize each and every day. If you survived these United States, probably most people would say that they want a life that we will seize the day. No one wants life to be mediocre. We want our lives to be full. We want everything we can get out of every single day. Yet we are wrapped up in deadlines, commitments, problems, and priorities, and it just doesn't always happen. And we do not seize the day. Yet, there are ways to seize the day, to seize every day of your life. And the Apostle Paul had this down to an art and wrote of the way to seize the day, to seize life in his epistle. Paul knows his surefire purpose for life. Do you know the purpose of your life? What is the primary purpose of an ink pen? To write? Of course. A $95, 24 karat gold cross pen that is out of ink is nice to look at, but it is a failure as a useful pen. It does not fulfill its purpose. When it comes time to endorse a check, you will bypass the empty solid gold pen and go for the 29 cent BIC. That works. Just like the pen, we will fail unless we know our reason for being, our purpose in life. Paul proclaims his reason for living with these words. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Philippians 3, 10 through 11. Simply put, Paul's reason for living was to be like Jesus. Should this not be our reason, our purpose for living, to be more like Jesus? to be conformed to his image, also in order to seize each and every day. Paul tells us to forget the past and press on to our heavenly goal. Hear his words. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Yet there will be trials, there will be times that we fail, times we will fail, fall short. On New Year's Day in 1929, Georgia Tech was playing California in a post-game, post-season game. Late in the second quarter, Roy Regals recovered a fumble for California and in his excitement became confused and ran the wrong way. After racing 65 yards, he was finally tackled by his own player at the two-yard line. California attempted to punt from deep in their own end zone, but the kick was blocked and Georgia Tech scored a safety. In the locker room at halftime, Riggles sat in the corner with his face buried in his hands, sobbing. The coach did not make his usual halftime speech, but before the team went out on the field in the second half, he simply said, the starting team goes back on this half. The whole team, except for Regals, who still had his face buried in his hands, said, I can't do it, coach. I've ruined the game. I've ruined the team. The coach said, Get up, Regals. The game is only half over. You belong on the field. Brothers and sisters, our game on this side of eternity is not over. God proclaims in Isaiah, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Isaiah 43:25. Praise God! 
If the Lord can forget our transgressions, then we should do the same. We can learn from our sins, from our failures, but do not let them be a yoke around your neck. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11:30. Brothers and sisters, live in love and love to live. God, it, live in God's love. Live in his agape love. When asked what agape was, a certain little boy said, Oh, that's the fish we have that always fights with our goldfish. We have all heard numerous times the words from 1 Corinthians 13 concerning the love we should portray. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Do you put this love into practice? Do you allow this love to permeate, permeate your very being? <clears throat> Do you really consider it a thriving aspect of living? Well, God does. The time we stop loving is the time we stop living. And the time we stop living, well, then we will only be existing and will not seize the day. We have all heard the phrase, love isn't something you feel, it's something that you do. Love is an attitude of God himself. It is the essence of who God is. In John's first epistle, it states these words. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and who knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. 1 John 4, uh, 7 through 8. Brothers and sisters, God is not like love. God is love. <coughs> Excuse me. The scriptures state these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Faith is the foundation of God's message. Hope is the attitude and the focus, but love is the action. When faith and hope are in line, we are free to love completely, and through this we can truly seize the day. And to fully seize the day, we must stop worrying and, giving, and give our burdens to the Lord. I read that a dense fog covering a seven-block area of a city is composed of less than one normal eight ounce glass of water. It is divided into billions of droplets. Such a small amount of water can create so much gloom and can even cripple an entire city. Worry and anxiety are like that. Just a small amount can settle on you like a great cloud of gloom and can keep you from enjoying your life. Fear deteriorates the quality of our lives and can even destroy us physically. Faith breathes life and joy into our bodies, and in this we find complete wholeness. Jesus tried to change our focus from fear to faithfulness when he says, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? Matthew 6, 26 through 27. So how do we change our focus from worry to faith? Give them all. Give them all to Jesus. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Seize the day. The life you live is not your own, but is a gift from God. Make the most out of this one life that he has given you. It is time to stop telling God how big your problems are and to start telling your problems how big your God is. We can learn and must learn to stop existing and to start living. Let us fight the good fight. Let us finish the race. Let us finish well. Brothers and sisters, seize the day. Amen. As our Savior Christ taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all your, our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into the all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and with all men in all places who have been called by God and through him, through whom be glory. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.